next on UCF Sports Night. They're the young backbone of the women's tennis team. We'll introduce you to three freshman Knights who've already made a big impact. And basketball season is just days away. We've got a preview of the women's team. All that and much more right now on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you're recovering well from a busy homecoming week here on campus. And what a week it was leading up to UCF's big football game on Saturday with Southern Miss. We'll get to those highlights in a moment. But first, let's take a look back at that homecoming week, starting with UCF's best known homecoming tradition. Let's take a look. And if it's homecoming Friday, that means it's Spirit Splash, marking the beginning of UCF's homecoming weekend. All the participants were there. Nitro, the cheerleaders, Night Moves, the Starlet Knights were there. Also, Coach O'Leary and a couple of players. And, of course, the students in the reflection pond. Then came Saturday with the parade marching its way through campus and kicking off a slew of events for the thousands of students, alumni, and fans on campus at UCF. Later that morning, the UCF women's basketball team made its debut on the home floor in an exhibition against DT3, a team of former major college players, including two WNBA players. Chelsea Wiley scored 18 points off 7 of 11 shooting, and Marquita Head added a double-double, 11 points and 13 boards. In the end, it was DT3 who came out on top 80 to 73. It's UCF's only exhibition as they get ready for the opener on the 16th at Colorado. Well, I think, you know, the great thing about exhibition games is it gives you a chance to, to really focus on what we need to do to improve, look at what we've already put in, and, and a lot of areas, um, I thought we did some good things. I thought defensively um, we didn't do as well as I had hoped, but, um, you know, we had some, some positives and I think a lot of things for our team to build off of um, going into Colorado next weekend. After that, it was time for football at Bright House Network Stadium as the Knights took on the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Rob Calabrese opened the scoring with a three-yard touchdown toss to Chemist Williams, but in the end, it was the Golden Eagles who came out on top 17-6. The night ended on a high note back at the arena as the men's basketball team hosted the first ever post-game madness. After a little showtime in the pregame, Jermaine Taylor showed off his skills. He racked up a game-high 31 points. Isaac Sosa also chipped in with 23, showing off his outside shooting. And Kenrick Zondervan added 16, helping the black team to an 89-83 victory over the gold team. Fans enjoyed a look at plenty of newcomers, and Jermaine Taylor and Coach Kirk Spiro spoke about the experience when the evening ended. Yeah, we got a young team. I mean, they're not used to playing in front of a crowd, so I mean, it's always good to come out here and have fun, play in front of our fans, you know, just have a good time. We are. It was a good turnout after a long day of football, and, uh, you know, fans came in here and were excited and pumped up, and, uh, you know, hopefully they'll get behind this group of young men and, and uh, have fun throughout the season. Plenty of teams on the road this week. The women's soccer team was in Houston for the Conference USA Tournament. They got off to a good start with a 2-1 victory over the hosts, Rice, in the first round. Danielle Dos Santos scored the Knights' fastest goal in five years, and Becca Thomas added the eventual game winner. Unfortunately, though, the Knights fell in their semifinal game against the eventual champions from Memphis. Check out UCFAthletics.com to find out if the Knights are in the NCAA Tournament. Men's soccer finished up its regular season with a 1-1 tie against South Carolina. Ryan Rochendell scored his third goal of the year to get the draw. The Knights now await what seed they will be in the Conference USA Tournament. The volleyball team also had a tough road trip this week. They fought to a fifth set with Marshall before going down. Stephanie Cerna led the Knights with 20 kills and a 385 hit percentage. Then it was off to East Carolina where the Knights came up short in four sets. Erin Campbell posted her 11th double-double of the season. The Knights have one last match, senior night, this week at the venue. Men's golf came up with a one-stroke victory at the Hummingbird Invitational in North Carolina to close out the fall. David Johnson came in second place in the individual standings and was named Conference USA Golfer of the Week for his efforts. 
And women's tennis finished up its fall season on a high note at the Miami Fall Invitational. Some of the highlights included Andrea Yakaman defeating the 53rd ranked player in the nation on Sunday. Meanwhile, Christy Kaur led the way for the Knights with a 4-2 record for the tournament. Wow, what a week. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, they are the terrific trio anchoring the women's tennis team. And they're all just freshmen. We'll have a look at them and plenty more when UCF Sports Night returns. Fan season tickets for men's and women's basketball are on sale now. To order, call 407-823-1000 or order online at ucfathletics.com. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. In just its second year under head coach Stephanie Nikitas, the women's tennis team has emerged as a solid contender for the conference USA Championship. And three of the main reasons why are all just freshmen. Christy Kaur, Alexis Rodriguez, and Andrea Yakaman have all emerged as solid players for UCF this fall. And we get a closer look at them in our Sports Night Spotlight. I'm really close with my fellow freshmen. Um, we live together and we just have we have a lot of fun together. It's been really good. UCF has a, like a great coach and um, I like the girls on the team a lot, a whole lot more than others and I just like the school and the campus. What I pretty much like chose about UCF was the coach. She, like she's really, really good and the team looked really, really well. So I liked it a lot here. Stephanie and Jacopo, the coaches, I think they're the really the ones who really brought me into this school. I feel that they're such good coaches and that they were going to help me more than anyone else would. The first semester on and off the court has been like really well. It's been tough like on the court, like hard workouts and off the court, definitely school work a lot of it, but I mean, it's been going really well so far. It's been really tough. I mean, um, off the court, I'm still trying to find my way around the campus. On the court, it's hard, a lot of hard work, um, but it's been going really well. I'm enjoying it so far. Having like a whole team there is just so much easier because it puts you in a whole like uh, just a group of people, and you can meet new people just based off them, and then it just. I guess. All the members in the team have been extremely nice. Like they made me feel like home and they actually made my experience a lot better here. At UCF I hope to accomplish going to the NCAAs with the team and winning conference. We hope to be ranked top 15 in the nation and we hope to make it to NCAAs. The chemistry between me and my teammates has been really good and um, we're getting along so well. We have a lot of fun together. The best advice from the seniors is being responsible and also like team unity like how we're supposed to work together as a team. Just do your best, work hard um, and not to give up that it's all going to come together. Freshmen have certainly been key this season and joining us now is their head coach Stephanie Nikitas of the UCF women's tennis team. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tell me, how important have these three freshmen been to the team this fall? Uh, the three freshmen have been amazing so far. Um, it's a large percentage of people on our team. We have eight players, so three freshmen um, are a big chunk of the team. They've been bringing a lot of character, energy, fun, and excitement. Um, their personalities are just tremendous. How much has each of them improved over the fall season? Um, each one is improving as we speak <laughs> on a daily basis and continuing to. Um, their work ethic is 
getting higher and higher and daily we see improvements with each one of them. You got some veterans on the team, we can't forget about them. How much have they helped uh, the freshmen come along this in their first semester? Well, they play a huge role in helping any anybody new you know, transition into a team, including our, our transfer student as well. So um, the, the upperclassmen play a role you know, each and every day with leadership and, and character bringing the freshmen along. Regarding the team overall as a whole, uh, how happy are you with the team's progress this fall season? Um, so far, it's been great. We've had some tough tournaments, and they've responded really well. Um, and I continue. I, I think that will continue into the spring. We have some tough matches, and uh, if we continue working hard the way that we are, um, we're going to do some great things in the spring. Let's break down that spring a little bit because obviously you ramp up as you head towards the NCAA's. What are you looking forward to the most? Um, some of our home matches, I think we have some great home matches. We've got uh, some ACC schools coming down as well as some Conference USA schools. So we have some top teams that we can get some, some wins against and uh, hopefully you know, get into the rankings. And you guys have a little bit more than a month off now until the spring season begins. What do you guys do in the course of this month? The month off is really important. Um, mentally, it's a chance to get away and just kind of relax a little bit. But also, it's a chance to, to hit the gym, hit the track, work hard on fitness so that you sustain the levels that we've been working working on so hard all fall and continue into the spring. And hopefully that momentum that you guys have built up to this point in the fall will definitely carry over through that. So it should be interesting to see. Stephanie Nikitas, hopefully. the head coach of UCF Women's Tennis, thank you so much for joining us here on UCF Sports Night. Thanks for having me. Stick around. Coming up next, we switch gears over to women's basketball. They're getting ready to start their season. And we've got a preview with head coach Joy Williams coming up next when UCF Sports Night returns. Here's a look at upcoming night's action this week. Brought to you by UCFAthletics.com, the official site for UCF Varsity Sports. UCF Sports Night returns in a moment. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. We're just outside the women's basketball practice facility where the magic happens. And joining me now is head coach Joy Williams of the UCF women's basketball team and Emma Cannon, one of her sophomores. Guys, thank you so much for taking some time for us. Thank you, Deb, thank for you. having us. Coach, I wanted to start by asking you how much the team has improved since you guys have begun practice. Well, we've improved a lot. You know, coming in last year as freshmen, there were so many things for them to learn. And uh, this year we came in with a different mindset. They came in a little bit stronger. Um, so we started from a completely different place. So we've made some, some good strides thus far in practice. Emma, you're one of a slew of sophomores on this team. There's no seniors. There's one junior. You also got a bunch of freshmen coming in. Who's going to provide the leadership for this team this year? Um, yeah, we have leadership by the committee. <laughs> but um, everybody has their days where they step up and um, be a leader. So there's not just one person in particular yet. What do you think, Coach? I think it's a, a, a opportunity for a lot of people to step up. You know, we have some people that are very capable. Um, the thing about having so many young players is that they didn't really have a lot of older players to learn from. So they're kind of learning as they go. So we have some very capable leaders. I know that one will emerge very soon, but they're all doing a good job of, of helping each other and, and being leaders when they need to step up. One of the positive things, Emma, too, is that you guys, as one of the sophomores, you guys played a lot of minutes last season as freshmen. How is that going to help you out, not just this season, but in your next couple of seasons as well? Well, last year, being a freshman, that was my foundation year. So um, as the years go on, hopefully I'll be, be able to get better, stronger, more physical out there. So it was just a stepping stone to what I look forward to in the future. Coach, the schedule that you guys play this season before January 1st, you got nine games against the big five conferences. You guys are traveling all over the place. You also got some good teams coming uh, here to campus. Tell us about that early season schedule and your tough opponents. Schedule is very tough non-conference and that's what we're trying to, we've got to 
we tell our players about a sense of urgency right now to prepare for that. You know, they're going to get a test right off the bat against the Big 12 opponent in Colorado. We're going to play the Big East, the Big 10, the SEC, the ACC, and all of that, Jeff, to prepare us for a successful Conference USA uh, season. So we're excited, you know, it'll be a great test, but it'll be good for us to see where we stack up. And that's my next question for you is with Conference USA this year, things always change every year. It seems like this league reforms itself. Uh, what are you looking forward to this year out of some of the opponents we'll see? Uh, very good competition. I think it's very good from top to bottom. Obviously, you know, when you look at Southern Miss, you look at a team that brings back a lot, all seniors, so they'll be very experienced. Um, ECU, uh, same way, but, you know, we feel good about where we are. Uh, we'll, we'll have kids that have experience now, so we're hoping to make a big jump from the bottom of the league up to that uh, top third. Last question for you, Emma. How excited are you to play the schedule coming up? Very excited. Very. It's an um, opportunity for us to get better in the preseason and off season. Well, yeah, off season. Sorry. All right, that's all right. Thank you so much, guys. Head coach Joy Williams and Emma Cannon of the UCF women's basketball team. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we'll put a bow on things, specifically with our plays of the week. Stick around. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment. Fans Night Vision, the official monthly publication of UCF Athletics, is available now. You can pick up a copy at several locations on campus, or to subscribe, call 888-877-4373, extension 121. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment. This is my UCF. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Time now to check in with UCF's athletic director in our Night's Talk segment with Keith Tribble. And this week we asked Mr. Tribble, how satisfied are you with the performance of UCF student athletes in the classroom? Well, we've been very fortunate that we've had, uh, since I've been here, two great years of academic success. Uh, so I am extremely happy with what we've done, uh, what our student athletes have done. Uh, last year was uh, again one of the best years we had in the sport of football over 60 some odd athletes who had a 3.0 or better rate point average and we had over 180 uh, student athletes that were on the commissioner's honor roll which means that's the highest you can get in our conference so our number one goal here is to graduate our student athletes, give them an opportunity to be successful in the classroom. So I can't be any more happier than I am today. But we have to continue doing that. And I think our student athletes know that, our coaches know that, and our academic staff knows that. And so our goal is to get to where our graduation rates are well in the 80% of our student athletes graduate and to continue that 3.0 plus in terms of uh, grade point average for all students. Time now for a homecoming edition of our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Play number three, women's hoops in the exhibition game against DT3. Asia Patrick with a great hustle in the backcourt, chases it down and gets it up ahead to Jaleesa Caldwell. It ends up in the hands of Chelsea Wiley and Chelsea hits the three from the corner to put UCF up early. Watch it again, the great teamwork for the Knights as they get ready for the regular season. Play number two from football, Kamar Aiken. Watch Rod Calabrese under pressure roll to his right, delivers the pass, and Kamar with a gorgeous diving catch on the sideline. Chris Carter asks, watch it again, as this play would be reviewed and it would stand up. A great throw by Rod Calabrese and a great catch by Kamar Aiken against Southern Miss. But play number one belongs to men's basketball, and man, this is going to be fun this year. Watch A.J. Robson, the sweet look away to Jermaine Taylor, who goes baseline and hammers that thing home. Get used to seeing this a lot this season. Jermaine with 31 points, and the boys also look ready to take the floor to start the season this week. Now here's a look at some of the other highlights from this week. It's just a lie. I've never been loved before, and I need a reason why. Those 
are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. Another busy week of sports here at UCF begins Tuesday night at UCF Arena with men's basketball. Yes, indeed. Coach Spira and the boys have their final exhibition of the preseason at 7 p.m. when they take on Flagler College in preparation for the start of the 08-09 season. The cross country team heads to Knoxville, Tennessee for the NCAA South Region Championships. They leave the starting line at 11 a.m. with a spot in the NCAA National Championships in the balance. The football team is on the road at Marshall on Saturday. The game kicks off at 4.30 p.m. in Huntington, West Virginia. Listen on the radio on AM 740 WQTM. The women's volleyball team wraps up the 2008 regular season at home in the venue. They face Southern Miss on Saturday night at 7 p.m. with positioning in the conference tournament on the line. Sunday marks the beginning of basketball season at UCF. The men's team tips off the season on the home floor at UCF Arena against North Carolina A&T. The game begins at 1 p.m. Meanwhile, the women tip off their season on the road. They head out to Boulder to face Colorado at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. On the air on Sunday at noon, check out UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary, debuting on West 2 and also airing at 4.30 on Tuesday on Sun Sports and throughout the week on UCF TV. Also, you can talk to Coach O'Leary himself on Monday during the George O'Leary Call-In Show, live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes at 7 p.m. on AM 540 WFLA. And just a reminder, you can catch the latest edition of UCF Sports Night every Tuesday at 5 p.m. on Sun Sports, as well as throughout the week on UCF TV. Check your local listing. And as always, for all the latest news and scores from all UCF sports, check us out on the web at UCFAthletics.com, your home for UCF varsity sports 24-7. And remember, as always, you can check out this episode and all of our archived episodes of UCF Sports Night online 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv and click on UCF Sports Night. That is all for us for this week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching and go Knights. Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by... Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life.